Welcome to Toronto, where the roof on the Rogers Center is wide open for this seventh and final game in this homestand. It's the Oakland Athletics against the Toronto Blue Jays for the fourth game of their series. Fred Lewis has been a great addition to this lineup, giving Cito Gaston a legitimate leadoff hitter. He had a good offensive game yesterday. He continues to impress with his skills in every aspect of the game. Hello, everybody. I'm Buck Martinez, along with Pat Tabler. And, Pat, we have seen a tough series here as yesterday the Blue Jays ran into a red-hot Gio Gonzalez. But over the long haul, the Blue Jays have really had the upper hand in this matchup. They've really had their number against the Oakland Athletics, and it really bears out in the numbers. Pitching, hitting, defense, it doesn't matter. The Blue Jays offensively have been great. Pitching, an ERA of just over two, which is fantastic, and the Oakland Athletics have really had a lot of trouble against the Blue Jays. They've also had a lot of trouble here at the Rogers Center, losing eight of their last ten. The first two games of this series has been about the long ball. John Buck on Thursday night and Alex Gonzalez on Friday. Well, it was a one-sided affair to John Buck's favor. Three home runs in that first game, really propelling the Blue Jays to a big one win. And then Alex Gonzalez was the man the next day. A couple of home runs. This is his second one, a line drive down the left field line. And then they turned it over to the pitchers in the third game. Gio Gonzalez was really tough yesterday. Had a wicked breaking ball, a very good fastball. The Blue Jays lost 4-3 to three to drop them to 3-6 and six in one-run games. Today's starting pitcher, Sean Markham, has really thrown the ball well. He's still looking for his first win, but the way he is pitched, he should be much better than that. Yeah, at least six innings in all five of his starts. He's just looking for some runs, and you look at the numbers here. He is just getting over two runs a game to work with. That's going to be tough to do, but when you're matched up against the other team's number one, you can see why Markham hasn't won a game yet. Yeah, that's the draw when you're starting in that number one slot, and today... Markham will go up against a tough pitcher in Ben Sheets, but last time against the Red Sox, he had everything working. Yeah, seven innings, he just gave up three earned runs. Remember, he was pitching after the Red Sox scored 13 runs the night before, so a good job by Markham on the mound, and he's, he's always a very good fielder here throwing out the base runner. Um, Sean Markham is everything you want in a starting pitcher. He really controls the offense with a combination of off-speed pitches. He's matched up against... Ben Sheets today, a former ace for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's a four-time All-Star. He also is the franchise leader in strikeouts for the Brewers. Got off to such a great start in his career. The numbers might not show it, but he has great stuff. Twice he was named the Milwaukee Brewers Pitcher of the Year. The problem was and is, has been, being on the disabled list. Six times in his career he's been on the DL. He's had a lot of problems with his right arm. Blue Jays are trying to win this series now. Look to their leadoff batter. Fred Lewis, great speed, good bat, and he's played very well in the outfield as well. Fred Lewis looking to set the tone today.
beat the Blue Jays 10 to 5 yesterday in the 4 3 win. Let's take a look at Bob Guerin's lineup. Cliff Pennington's had a great run here in this series. In his last seven games, he's hit 379, a home run and six RBIs. He is a switch hitter at the top of the order that can also steal bases. He's followed by Barton Sweeney and Kuzminov. Eric Chavez back in a D8 spot today, one of the all time career offensive players for Oakland, relegated to just the D8 spot at this point in his career. Adams and Rosales has had a nice series. He's playing at second base. Patterson. Donaldson, who hit his first career Major League home run in yesterday's game, and the center fielder is Rajai Davis. That is a lineup that Sean Markham takes to the mound for the sixth time this year, looking for his first win. Run support has been a problem for Markham. He has received two runs or fewer to work with in each of his last four starts, but great numbers all the way around for Sean Markham, as you can see it right there. In his career, one and one with an ERA just over four in four starts versus the Oakland A's. This afternoon's scouting report for Sean Markham. Quick worker, strike thrower, just seven base on balls in the 34 innings that he has pitched this year. Any pitch at any time. Fastball cutter, slider, curb change, it doesn't matter. And he has straight A's versus the A's, a 218 batting average in those starts versus Oakland. And he'll face the shortstop, Cliff Bennington, the switch hitter batting left-handed against Sean Markham. Bennington had a great month of April. He had 16 RBIs for the month. Markham misses with a fastball for ball. Bennington has done a great job filling in for Coco Crisp in that leadoff spot. Pops it up left side. Gonzalez battling the sun, trying to shade his eyes. He's got it. Bobbled it, but kept on, held on to it for the first out. <laughs> little different uh, scenery that the Blue Jays are looking at now from the one that they took in batting practice. The roof was on, and now it's bright sunshine. Always a concern here at the Rogers Center with the roof open on an afternoon game. That sun is directly over the field. You look right up into the sun in those pop-ups. One out now for Derek Barton. Barton takes the first pitch strike. Barton closing in on 300. He is tied for first in the American League with 21 walks. 0 oh 2. Yeah, those 21 walks will help your on base percentage. And second in the AL in on base percentage. But against Sean Markham, I think you have to have a very different approach. He's going to throw a lot of strikes. Again, just seven base on balls in the 34 innings that he has worked this year. Averaging 1.9 walks per nine innings, and he's among the leaders in that department. There you see his numbers against Oakland in four starts. Owen two to Barton upstairs for a ball. Derek Barton and Cliff Pennington, the only two athletics that have started every game. They've played in all 25 games. Fouled off at the plate. They have had injuries like you would not believe when you talk about the Oakland A's. So no surprise when just two guys have played in all their games so far this year. Yep, they've got their starting catcher on the DL, Kurt Suzuki, their center fielder, Coco Crisp right there. Travis Buck, their left fielder. Fred Anderson, one of their great starters. Strike three called right on the outside corner. Barton's caught looking, and Markham paints the outside. You can't go up there finding yourself in a hole because Sean Markham's going to expand the strike zone. This looks like a cutter right on the outside part of the plate. Good job by John Buck holding it there for the home plate umpire. Two up, two down here in the first. Sweeney bends back from an inside fastball. Ryan Sweeney, the right fielder. Ball down. Two balls, no strikes. Sweeney has reached base in all the 23 games he's played in. Fly ball to right field. Bautista with a long run, and he makes the catch.
Great concentration by Jose Bautista. Caps off a 1-2-3 inning for Sean Markham. on the season. Lewis Hill and Lynn followed by Wells Overbay and Gonzalez Bautista's in right. John Buck on this current homestand has been on fire. 353 with three home runs. That all came in the game on Thursday here at Rogers Center. John McDonald was a late addition to the lineup. Travis Snyder has been scratched with the flu. So Ben Sheets takes the mound for the sixth time this year. Sheets missed the entire 2009 season after undergoing surgery on his right elbow in February, little Tommy John surgery last year. But you can see he has a good fastball. He lost uh, his second consecutive start his last time out when the Tampa Bay Rays got to him. But his stuff is really good when he's on. And he'll do a lot of that, elevating that four-seam fastball. He'll get you to chase that fastball top of the zone and above. He has had great success against the Blue Jays. He's only faced him a couple of times, but he's 2-0 and with an ERA under two. Fred Lewis with a season-high three hits in yesterday's game, trying to solve Ben Sheets here in the first inning. 2-2 two -two pitch to Lewis inside three and two. Ben Sheets doesn't mess around. It really shows his National League pedigree. Came up with the Brewers, spent his entire career in Milwaukee. He walked it. Well, the Blue Jays have only faced him a couple times, so let's take a little closer look at Ben Sheets. Here it is. You're going to see a lot of fastballs. Four seamers, and he will challenge you. He's got a power curveball that he can use for strikeouts. He'll throw it any time. He busted in. He pitches more effectively when he pitches inside and establishes the inner half of the plate, saying, hey, this is my part of the plate. Aaron Hill with Lewis at first. There goes Fred Lewis. Pitch inside. Throw to second base. In the dirt. Lewis has another stolen base. Why wait around? Sheets has a high leg kick going to home plate. Test out the rookie behind the plate. And... Donaldson and Fred Lewis adds that ingredient to the Blue Jays at the top of the lineup with some speed and very quickly Jays have a runner in scoring position Aaron Hill with a drive to the gap in left center and that's going to get up against the wall off the wall Here comes Lewis around third to score and Aaron Hill drives in the first run of the game his third double of the season puts the Blue Jays out in front. Doesn't that look good? Aaron Hill driving in a run early in a ball game. He knows that Ben Sheets is going to challenge him with a fastball. And this time he gets right on top of it and drives it to the deepest part of the ballpark and left center field against that wall. Boy, it's a great sign to see Aaron Hill's back coming to life. He said this morning he was getting close. 
you said he'd hit a home run today. <laughs> Just missed. <laughs> and a breaking ball for a strike into Adam Lind. Lind back in the DH spot here this afternoon. He was in left field in yesterday's game. Blue Jays up one to nothing. On a first inning double by Aaron Hill. Swing and a fly ball left field. Eric Patterson now backing up. Hill's tagging up at second. Patterson makes the catch on the warning track, and Aaron Hill alertly moves over to third base. Boy, that ball carried a long way. Yeah, it certainly did, and everybody knows that Adam Lynn's got good power the other way. Alertly, Hill tags up and gets himself to third base with less than two outs. Defensively, there, Patterson in left, Rajai Davis in center. Sweeney back in there after a day off yesterday, whereas Allison Barton on the right side, Pennington and Kuzminoff on the left side, and Josh Donaldson will form the battery today with Ben Sheets. And that kid yesterday did a good job, I thought, of catching Gio Gonzalez, calling a good ball game and picking up his first big league hit. Infield halfway with the runner at third base. Vernon Wells takes a strike. There you see the infield defense, and not right on the edge of the grass. They no winner. Hill's got that hamstring. There's a drive to center field, and that's going to get down. Aaron Hill will come in from third. Vernon Wells goes into second. And Wells picks up the second RBI of the day. Twelfth double already for Vernon Wells this season. There are some line drives being hit all over the ballpark here at the bottom of the first inning. He's got to get this fastball in. See Donaldson, the catcher, move in, but it's right down the middle of the plate, and Vernon Wells, who is swinging a hot bat, rips it into the gap in right center. He has now taken the lead in the American League doubles category. He was tied with Miguel Cabrera at the start of the day. Lyle Overbay, pinch hit RBI double in yesterday's game. Takes a curveball for a strike. Off the plate outside. Sheets has had trouble with first batters of innings, and he walked Fred Lewis to start this game, and then after Lewis stole second, Aaron Hill cashed him in. Leadoff batters hitting over 400 to start an inning against Ben Sheets. On the ground, Rosales has it, and Overbay is retired. Wells moves over to third. What's a mystery, Buck, when you look at the numbers? On Ben Sheets, his right-handers coming into this game hitting 356 against the tall right-hander. And now, he's got great stuff. It just tells me that he hasn't had the command to push him off the right. plate and protect that curveball. Yep. That curveball has always been such an important weapon for him. Alex Gonzalez with Wells at third and two outs. And yeah, we've seen that already twice here in the first inning where he tries to establish inside with that fastball to right handers and he's left it out over the plate. Hill got him for a double to left and Wells got him to a double to right. Left field line that's got a chance that ball is out of here. Alex Gonzalez red hot. Has put the Blue Jays up 4 nothing here in the first. His eighth home run of the season. That gives him 21 RBI. You know, I knew Alex Gonzalez was a good fastball hitter. I didn't realize what a good breaking ball hitter he is. This is the second off-speed pitch in this series that he's going to take right down that left field line and on a line. It had the distance. We were just wondering if it was going to get up high enough. And it does for home run number eight. So, Sean Markham, there are your runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about run support. He didn't know how to live with four run lead. Jose Bautista initially penciled in at third base and then was moved to right field when Travis Snyder had to be scratched. Well, going back to that hanging breaking ball, that's exactly how you like to see hitters take it. Hit it hard. Don't try to flare it somewhere. When it's spinning up there, 
get after it. Cito was talking about that the other day. So important that if he is hanging that breaking ball, instead of just trying to, like, service the ball the other way, attack it. Sharply on the ground. Kuzmanov has it. Throw to first base, and Batista is retired. Good inning for the Blue Jays with the bats. Two doubles and a home run capped off by Alex Gonzalez's two-run shot to left field. Number eight on the season for Gonzalez. Four-nothing Jays. Minnesota and the Yankees defensively. There's Jose Bautista in right field. He was originally scheduled to make the start at third base. Johnny Mack gets it there, his fourth of the season. Markham and Buck Bautista, outstanding catch to end the top of the first inning. Kevin Kuzminoff bats here, top of the second. Three for 12 in his series against the Jays. Breaking ball misses the inside corner. Ball and two strikes to Kevin Kuzmino. And if you know Sean Markham, he looks out at that scoreboard right now and sees 0-0. Zero, zero. Loves the run. 4 nothing. he'll take it for sure. But he is a gamer. Base hit back up the middle. Kuzminov starts the second inning with a solid single. Now that's a great point. We make a lot of talk about run support and all that. Pitchers never think about that. They go out there, they have one thing they can control, and that's how they throw the ball. Eric Chavez steps in in the DH spot here this afternoon. Yesterday, the DH was Jake Fox against the left-hander, Evelyn. Outside for a ball. He'll get most of the starts. This is his 18th start in their 26th game as the designated hitter. When he was healthy before back problems robbed him of his power, he is one of the better power hitters in the American League. Cut on and fouled into the glove of John Buck. Quick bat. Coming into this season, he had total 229 career home run. Still looking for his first one in 2010. A ball and a strike to the A's DH, Eric Chavez. Hopped up left side. Fred Lewis comes in. Shallow left field and makes the catch. 
He talked about Fred Lewis and his play in the outfield. He really covers a lot of ground, and that takes an awful lot of pressure off Vernon Wells to worry about the gap in left center. He can cover the line from the line all the way to left center field. Vernon doesn't have to worry about that part of the field anymore. One of the things he's working on is the bank of lights. New ballpark. It'll take him a while. Adam Rosales, the second baseman, takes a pitch inside. Rosales has had a good road trip at 421 on his road trip. Average still over 300. He was one for four in yesterday's game. Two balls and no strikes. Even after yesterday's game, his, he got that one hit. They were talking about his throw that he made on that Fred Lewis double late in the game. In the seventh inning, after Lewis had hit the double and drove in the second round of the inning, he tried to stretch it for three, and Rosales threw a strike to nail him at third. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike to the A second baseman. Boy, when you're down by four early in the ball game, it really limits the number of things you can do offensively. Yeah, you can't bunt. You really can't steal. It's tough to hit and run. What you have to do is you have to go out there and start grinding at bats. And that's one of the things I've seen here with that Rosales taking some pitches. That 2-0 pitch from Sean Markham was right there, and he took it all the way looking for a walk. Ball right in on his hands. He fights off. Evens the count at two and two. Blue Jays trying to win the series. They're up two games to one. Oakland behind the fine efforts of Gio Gonzalez yesterday. The left-hander went six and two-thirds and held them to just three runs on three hits. One out here, top of the second. Just missed low. Three and two. Well, Markham, not a real big strikeout guy, but Rosales struck out three times on Friday night. You start to run her here? I don't think so. I, I don't think so because you're down by four runs. You've got to hit your way back into the ball game. You can't run into an out. Not going. Pulled foul outside of third. You know, another thing that you do, you say, well, okay, I want to start the runner to stay out of the double play. Well, what if it's a line drive right at one of the infielders? Now you've run yourself right out of an inning. You're looking for base runners right now if you're Bob Garrett. And you're also causing Markham to throw a few more pitches just to see where he is this inning. Markham would love to get this finished off right here. Blue Jays have turned 26 double plays. <coughs> Just off the end of the bat, Rosales stays alive. Well, what a good sign to see Sean Markham back on the mound again. Just like Ben Sheets missed the entire season a year ago because of Tommy John surgery. All throughout the spring, you could see that he was healthy, he was confident. When these guys come back from surgery, velocity comes back first, but it's the command and the movement that the last aspects of your pitching that return. Another full count pitch. He walked them. Two on, one out now for the athletics. Ball just off the plate inside. First walk issued by Sean Markham. We haven't had to say that too many times this year for Sean Markham. You were talking about command is the last thing to come, and that's the first thing you look at when you are watching a pitcher in spring training, and all spring long his command has been there. Being able to throw all of his pitches over at any time at any part of the strike zone. Now, that's such an important part of his game. He has to command both sides of the plate just to keep the hitters honest. So two on here in the second with one out for Eric Patterson, the left fielder. Takes the first pitch strike.
Patterson has started each of the last days seven games six in left field and one at second base. Tapped on the ground outside of first. In this series, Patterson two for 12. He's driven in a run. In yesterday's game, that RBI came in the second inning, part of a one for four afternoon. He's in a hole against Markham here, 0 and 2. Blue Jays are up four to nothing. Four runs in the first. Strike three call. Inside quarter. Second strikeout for Sean Markham. Such an effective pitch for Sean Markham. That fastball that he can bring back over the inside part of the play where that left-handed batter just gives up on it and you see great tight movement just a little bit but enough to get over the inside corner two on with two outs now for the catcher John Josh Donaldson first pitch strike you know another thing that the starters have been doing is they've been keeping the ball in the ballpark having to get up too many home runs Josh Donaldson hit a home run yesterday for his first big league hit. That snapped a streak of 59 consecutive innings where starters hadn't given up a home run. Good swing and a miss by Donaldson. First major league home run for the A's catcher came yesterday. Trying to get the ball in. But he's big and he's strong and he just gets it into the bullpen for the home run. They gave him a silent treatment when he got back to the dugout. Markham ahead, 0 and 2. Laid off the breaking pitch. They make a great point about the starting pitchers keeping the ball in the ballpark. That'll keep you in the game. Yeah. Keep the ball down, give your defense a chance to help you out. You avoid a lot of crooked numbers. And if you play good defense, and the Jays have played great defense, just 12 errors all season long. You're going to be into a lot of games. Just off the plate. Two and two. Now we saw a fine defensive play to end the first inning in right field. Jose Bautista laid out, hauled in a line drive off the bat of Ryan Sweeney. That got Markham out of the first. Donaldson trying to tell the umpire that that ball hit him. Well, I'm sure he did. It's a curveball, backup curveball, and it sticks to that elbow out there and leaves it out there. But you've got to make an effort to at least try and get out of the way. If the umpire doesn't think you did, sorry. Full count. Two outs. Runners will be on the move. They're off. Foul back. He doesn't get cheated. No, he does swing the bat well. We mentioned he'd gotten off to a great start in Triple A with Sacramento. Hit four home runs already in Sacramento. Started out with the Cubs, came over here in a trade with Chicago. Three and two. Struck him out. Sean Markham with two strikes, strands two runners. The Blue Jays are up four nothing.
Baseball Day, and before the game, the Blue Jays presented a check for $25,000 to Baseball Ontario. Brandon Morrow was along for the check presentation, and Blue Jays supporting amateur baseball in Ontario. Great opportunity to help out the kids, give them a chance to get new equipment and get further along in their baseball career. Good day for amateur baseball here at the Rogers Center. Ben Shades trying to bounce back after a rough first inning. Blue Jays reached him for four runs on three hits. It'll be eight, nine, and one here in the second. Curveball missed. Ben Sheets has always been a high fastball curveball pitcher. Comes right back with it. That's hammered to left field. That'll get over the head of Patterson. Off the wall and left. John Buck around first. He's going into second. The throw is not in time. Six two baggers now for John Buck. And that's how you hit a hanging breaking ball. Hit it hard. Take a good short swing at it and try and pull it out of the ballpark. John Buck almost does that, hitting it right at the base of the wall in front of the Blue Jays' bullpen. And then hustles around first base and gets himself to second. There's a different sound in his bat now when he's making yep. contact. He's getting ready early, and he is not missing many pitches right now. We talked about what a great homestand he had. So Buck's at second base for John McDonald. Right side of the infield is shortened up. There's a ball toward right. That's got a chance to get down, and it will. John Buck goes around third. He'll score. John McDonald going into second. He's going for three. Rosales has a good arm. It's off the mark. Triple for John McDonald. You know, when you're a player and you look at the lineup card when you come to the ball game, and you see that you're not in there. You go through your work, you do everything, and then all of a sudden there's a change right before the game starts, and you're put in there. You don't have time to think. See the ball and hit it, and that's exactly what Johnny Mack did right there. First pitch fastball ripped it into the gap in right center field. A good hustling play all the way to third base. Twelfth Major League triple for McDonald. Fred Lewis takes a first pitch down. Lewis walked, stole a base, and scored in the first. Inside. I don't know if there's anything quite as exciting as a triple. I watch it unfold. Ball gets down. Good cutoff. Close play at third. Breaking ball fouled at the plate. Yeah, that's a great play, isn't it? Especially what we got to play in Kansas City, and we got to watch Willie Wilson run around those bases on those triples. That was something special. It looked like he went across the field. <laughs> <laughs> he was so fast. The infield is shortened up now. Two balls and a strike to Lewis. Fouled it back. I'm sure the Blue Jays will play, make the ball go through. No contact play with nobody out and some RBI men coming up. Especially where you are in the order. It's mm -hmm. a great point. You've got Hill on deck. He's already drilled a double. Got a guy at third base. No outs. Two and two to Fred Lewis. Left field. That's going to be deep enough. McDonald tags. Patterson catches it. And John McDonald will come in to score the sixth run of the afternoon on the sack fly by Fred Lewis. And Sheet still has not been able to establish and get that fastball in on the hitter. Catcher Donaldson wanted that ball in just a little bit more, but it caught too much of the plate, and Lewis ripped it to left field for his third RBI. That's a perfect approach. Just go to the big part of the field. Aaron Hill takes a strike. Hill ripped a double off the top of the wall in left center. His first time up. Off the plate. Outside. Two and one. Breaking ball way inside. He'll have to duck out of the way. 
On Tuesday, Ben Sheets went up against Tampa Bay. He was touched up for eight earned runs in just four innings. Fouled off. Big hit in that ball game was in the fourth inning. Or excuse me, a four-run third inning. He gave up a big home run to Pat Pearl. Three-run home run right after his offense had got him back into the game. Outside ball four. Now, Oakland rolled the dice with Ben Sheets, signing to a one-year, $10 million contract. Just hoping that he would be able to recapture the form he had when he was pitching in Milwaukee. He was a four-time All-Star. He was the Milwaukee Brewer ace, and he holds the franchise record for strikeouts by a Brewer. Adam Lynn back up the middle. Rosales flips it to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. What an effort by Adam Rosales. Diving, backhanding the ball behind second and getting the lead runner. You know, you try and lead your shortstop, but it's so hard when you're back behind second base and trying to turn double play. Rosales shows some good range here, getting over and getting to the ball. Now watch where he is. He's behind him. So Pennington has to catch the ball and then pivot. That's too much time as Adam Lind will beat that one out. Good play right there by Rosales. Two outs now for Wells. Hit a double in the gap in right center. Picked up the RBI. Wells now has 17 RBI. 68 total bases. Leads the American League. Fly ball in the center. Rajai Davis holds it in. Blue Jays are retired in the second. But they put up two more runs. John McDonald, a late starter, takes advantage, goes the opposite way, drives home John Buck, the triple for John McDonald. Six nothing Jays. independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center homeowners helping homeowners top of the third Rajai Davis the number nine hitter takes a first pitch strike Davis batting 233 in the early going pops the ball back and it's going to fall into the seats Rajai Davis, the center fielder, has 11 stolen bases. He's tied with Brett Gardner of the Yankees for the lead in the American League. His 11th one was a pretty sneaky play in yesterday's ballgame in the ninth inning. Catcher was trying to throw it back to Scott Downs, and he actually took off from first base and was credited with the stolen base. Now 
Markham and John Buck couldn't get their heads together. Struck him out. Three pitch strikeout, three in a row now. Down on strikes for Markham. Second one consecutively swinging. It's hard to tell if that's a slider or a cutter because it moves so much so quickly. But a good spot there against the right handed hitter. Guys like Markham are very difficult to catch because they can do so many different things. Yeah, he can make the ball go this way, he can make it go that way. He pulls the string nicely. Curveball. You don't want to get crossed up when Sean Markham's on the mound. A little bit like the mad professor out there. He can see things other people don't even think about. <laughs> but he can literally cut the ball and sink the ball on both sides of the plate. Ball's behind Pennington here. 3 0. A four pitch walk after three straight strikeouts. Second walk issued by Markham. Mentioned Markham. The start of play today was sixth in the American League in walks per nine innings. Walked on average just 1.9 batter for every nine innings pitched. Already walked two here this afternoon. Right back in there with a strike. 34 innings pitch coming into this game from Sean Markham. Which places him seventh in the American League in innings pitched. He's the only starter without a win who has thrown that many innings. Right on the corner. Well, he comes right back after the four pitch walk to Pennington to throw two straight strikes to Derek Barton. Got him last time looking at a cutter on the outside part of the play. So, you know, Barton is thinking about that right now. And he went out there and got it off the plate. So Markham's got him expanding his zone now, leaning out over the plate. And this is what Markham's really good at, following what a hitter is trying to do. You saw that swing from Barton, kind of a half swing, like he was looking out there. Now's the time to throw that two-seamer. The same one that we saw against Eric Patterson that we got him to strike out on. Another 0-2 pitch. Popped up. Aaron Hill retreats. Vernon Wells is calling for it in center. Takes the long run and catches the pop up. Two outs. Well, power is not a big part of the Oakland A's offense. It really hasn't been for the longest time, really since the, the early 2000s. Here is the power adage the fewest home runs in baseball over the last couple of seasons and you can see where the athletics fit in right down there. Now there was a time when you thought about nothing but home runs with Oakland with Tejada, Giambi, Eric Chavez healthy, Mark McGuire and Conseco before them. Yeah, you can go all the way back to those guys. Uh, Reggie and Bando uh, and Rudy and you know they've always been known for the home run. But this is a little different story and that's one thing too power is expensive. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking that that costs money to, to sign big home run hitters unless you develop them yourself. And you have them in your farm system for a few years and then you get them in the big leagues and you can control them for four or five years. Yeah, you just hope that they don't have any struggles early in their career and can take advantage of it. And one guy that we've talked about today is Eric Chavez who came up 2000 Part of those great teams mm -hmm. early on with Giambi and Tejada. And they had a lot of pop. Chavez, of course, has been plagued by injuries the last several seasons. 0 oh and 2. Ball in the dirt, blocked nicely by John Buck. Keeps Pennington at first base. 
John Buck has really been working hard on that part of his game. He's come out and blocked ball several times during this homestand, trying to improve on a problem that has cropped up here in the early part of the season. Wild pitches have been a big part. That's the number that you're talking about. He's done a good job to live. Well, on this homestand, really. Tapped foul at the first baseline. Todd Steverson, the first base coach, former number one pick of the Blue Jays. Coaching here with Oakland. He was taken in a Rule 5 draft from Toronto at the time. The Blue Jays were loaded with outfielders, and the Tigers drafted Steverson in the Rule 5 draft, and he made it to the big leagues with the Tigers. Sean Green was probably in the system, and Shannon Stewart, some of the other great young outfielders. Good pitch. There's that two-seam fastball that catches the left-handers off guard. Sean Markham pitches around a four-pitch walk, and the Jays are in command early. catching prospects up and down the system. J.P. Aaron Sebia off to a good start at AAA, but look at the list and a lot of good catching prospects really off the great starts. I was watching Travis Darno's numbers early and the power is down there. It's really hard to hit home runs down in the Florida State League because you've got those big ballparks and that heavy air. Three home runs already for the young catcher they got from the Philly. Well, there's two things that the Blue Jays have a wealth of and that's young pitching prospects and pretty promising catching prospects. There's a base hit up the middle for Lyle Overbay. First pitch swinging and another first batter reaching base against Ben Sheets. That's been a problem for him all year long. And again today, all three first batters have been on board. Yeah, 435 when leading off an inning. It doesn't take long for Lyle Overbay to find one he likes. And singles here in the third inning. Two run homer in the first for the shortstop Alex Gonzalez. Gonzalez now eight home runs and 21 driven in. First pitch strike. Well, you were talking about the production for the shortstops. Well, here they are. Gonzalez now with 21 RBIs. He has overtaken Derek Jeter for the most RBIs by a shortstop. Elvis Andrus, the shortstop for the Texas, is starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, he's not the same kind of hitter as Bartlett, Gonzalez, and Jeter. Cliff Bennington, most of his RBIs have come from the ninth spot when he's down in that order. There's a few more opportunities. 1-1 one, one to Gonzalez. Off the plate inside. Boy, Alex Gonzalez has been better than advertised for sure. And one thing that you want to do as a new player into an organization is make a contribution early. And he's done just that. Three and one. Average at 284.
Three and two. Overbay last yesterday afternoon had a big pinch hit double. Batting for Jose Molina in the seventh inning. Picked up an RBI and really put the Blue Jays in a spot to come back in that game. Then Fred Lewis drove in a run but was thrown out at third trying to advance. Cued off the end of the bat. Yeah, but he's right there on that curveball. Same pitch that he homered on. So what's that tell you as a pitcher? He homered on a curveball. He stayed on that curveball with 3-2. Does that force you back to a fastball? I think so. Or it forces you to something else. That's why a pitcher that's got a cutter and a sinker is so important. Another foul back on the fastball. That, that you know, basically that's two more pitches. Because you can cut it or sink it when you think that hitter is going to be sitting on your fastball. Uh, and that's the advantage Sean Markham has is that he can do so much with one pitch. You sink it on both sides of the plate. Take the cutter both sides of the plate. Another foul back. Ben Sheets is really not known to have a slider. It's mostly fastball. Overhand curveball and a changeup, a little bit of a changeup. That time he tried to show Alex Gonzalez a little something different there by spinning the ball up there like a slider. Gonzalez has a pretty good read on Ben Sheets right now. And Sheets has to be wondering what do I have to do to finish this at bat? Right, right. What do I have in my arsenal to get Alex Gonzalez out? They faced each other over the National League. So he's very familiar with them. We're going to drive towards center. Rajai Davis with a late break, but he's got good speed and catches the ball just on the warning track. Overbay retreats to first. And Sheets won that battle. One out, one on now for Jose Bautista. Popped up. Left side. Third baseman Kuzminov takes the ball in fair territory. Two outs. John Buck. With a booming double off the wall and left. His sixth double of the season. Boy, he's swinging with so much confidence right now. It's such a different approach, and it just gets back to his setup being early and being ready to hit. Came out here early the other day. The day hit three home runs and he hit against Bruce Walton the pitching coach who got about 45 feet from him with firing fastballs at him simulating him in game situations to get that front foot down and get those hands moving a little bit early what that does is it gets you in a good hitting position and it gets you ready and he has taken off but it seems to me if you're ready early there's not a lot of movement. Keeps your head still. Subsequently keeping your eyes still. And you just see the ball better. You see where the foul balls go, too. John Buck hasn't hit a lot of foul balls down the right field line. That means he's getting ready. And he's not late. Yeah, when you're late on a fastball, you'll be shooting the ball into that first base bug out. Yeah. <laughs> two and two as Buck steps in. Two outs here, bottom of the third. Jammed and flared it out of play. Into the seats. Six nothing, Blue Jays lead here, bottom of the third inning. A four run first inning, keyed by Alex Gonzalez's two run home run. 
Struck him out. Went away. John Buck goes down swinging. Been a lot of strikeouts here this afternoon. Sean Markham has five strikeouts. He's had good command of both sides of the plate. Five strikeouts, one off his season high. Blue Jays lead it six nothing. His season high in strikeouts has been six. Set to work here in the fourth inning. He'll face Kevin Kuzman off. First pitch swing. Kuzman off came from the San Diego Padres, where it looked like he was going to be a fixture at third base for a number of years. But now he is getting up there after a couple of years. There's a ball shot in the left field. Fred Lewis comes quickly, but it can't stay in his glove. It'll be a leadoff single for Kuzminoff. San Diego, they have another good young player, Chase Headley, who was taken over at third base, so he was expendable, and they were able to send him over here to Oakland. Here comes Lewis. Ball sinks very quickly, and it gets underneath his glove. Looks like Lewis might have had a difficult time picking the ball up off the bat. Just a momentary hesitation before he went after it. Base it all the way for Kevin Kuzminoff. Eric Chavez, the DH, takes the ball off the plate. Cito Gaston was telling us a story about Joe Carter when he played left field or right field here. He had trouble seeing the ball off the facings of all the decks here. So they went out and painted all the deckings here. It used to be concrete, if you remember. And the ball would get lost in that. Sound like a broken bat into right field, and Kuzminov stops at second as Bautista gets it in quickly. Eric Chavez has his first hit of the day. Back to back base hits to start the fourth. Still has a really quick bat. Rips that ball into right field. There's what we were talking about. If you can see right, right there, that blue area, right? The facings of the, the, the upper decks here. That used to be concrete, and the ball would get lost in there. Outfielders now pick it up a little bit easier since they have been painted. First and second, nobody out. Adam Rosales takes the ball down. Blue Jays are up 6 nothing. Athletics trying to scratch their way back into this ball game. Back-to-back -back base hits start the inning. Off speed pitch for a strike. We mentioned the Athletics have hit just 16 home runs this year. And over the last several seasons, haven't had an awful lot of power. That's where it really becomes a challenge to get back in a game early when you're down 6 nothing. When you have that kind of power, that, that always keeps you in the ball game. A bloop, a blast, a walk, three-run home run. 
Two balls and a strike. On the ground to third. Foul ball. John McDonald backhanded the ball just over the top of the bag, but the ball was in foul territory. Third base umpire Scott Barry made the call quickly. And a heads-up play by John McDonald, who's going to try and catch the ball and tag the bag all in one. You see him right there. He's got his left foot on the bag. If that ball is called fair, that's a double play. Well, you could see the umpire was perfectly situated on the foul line behind McDonald so he could see the ball. And McDonald caught it. Scott Barry down at third. 2-2 count to Adam Rosales. First and second, nobody out. All down, three and two. You know, here's the thing. When you, when you don't hit a lot of home runs, you have to keep stringing base hits together, and that is hard to do in the major league. Just keep hitting, getting base hits, getting walks, things like that. The pitching is just too good where if you have one swing that can get you two or three runs, it's a big advantage, I think. Ball four. Bases are loaded with nobody out. Back-to-back -back base hits to start the inning by Kuzminoff and Chavez. And now, uncharacteristically, Sean Markham has walked his third batter here today. Eric Patterson, strikeout victim in his first at bat. Bases are loaded. Just outside of first. Six nothing, Blue Jays are up. Ron Markham staked to an early lead. Four in the first, two in the second. Ground ball pitcher and Sean Markham. The Blue Jays are going to play back. They'll trade a run for two outs here. It's got to be hit hard to get Patterson. He runs really well. Left side out of play. 0 oh and 2. Bright sunny day here with the roof open at the Rogers Center. Pop-ups, fly balls will be a challenge for defenders. Sun sits high over the top of the stadium. Anything in the air, they'll be looking straight up into that sun. Struck him out. Second time today, Markham has retired Patterson on strikes. He now has six. Pulled a string on him this time. Last time it was a fastball in the inner half. This time he'll pull the string and have Patterson way out in front. Just hoping to foul that ball off and he doesn't come close to it. One out. Josh Donaldson. The number eight hitter. Bases loaded with one out. Popped him up. Left side into foul ground is McDonald. He's got room and makes the catch. Two-thirds of the way out of the woods. Two outs now with the bases loaded. Big pitch by Markham. Now the number nine batter. Rajai Davis struck out in the third. First pitch swinging, base hit to left field. Kuzminov comes in. Chavez will be stopped at third. Then the A's break through. RBI single by Rajai Davis. Davis has had a good series against the Blue Jays in this four game set. Three stolen bases, and that was his fourth base hit, not waiting around for anything from Markham. He's going to jump on the first pitch he sees and rips it in the left field. Ball was hit so hard, and the ball charged by Lewis that only one run can score. 
Leadoff batter Cliff Pennington with the bases loaded. Off speed pitch up and away. A ball and no strikes. Markham facing a bases loaded, no out situation. Struck out Patterson, then got the catcher Donaldson to pop up. But Rajai Davis came through with a two out base hit to left. Cut on and missed by Pennington. Minimize the damage. Back to back base hits started the inning, then they walk loaded the bases. Yeah, he's going to have to make a pitch. This is their best RBI man hitting out the the leadoff spot in the order, hitting over 300 with men in scoring position, hitting right at 300 with runners on base. Good pitch. Welcome ahead of all in two strikes. Moving that ball around the strike zone. Outer half, inner half. A ball and two strikes. Bases loaded. Two outs here in the fourth. A run in. Popped him up back behind the screen, and it'll go out of play. The A's have made Markham work. He's already thrown 71 pitches. Another 2-1 pitch to Pennington. In the dirt. Knocked down by John Buck. Two and two. This is where I'd like to have this at bat resolved. You don't want to go three and two with two outs and the bases loaded. Give the runners that running start. Yeah, this is the action pitch. If he wants to get him out, this is the way. This is the one and the place in the order where he wants to. Right here. Off the plate, outside. It'll be four. He had a good idea. He has had good control with that pitch on the outer half, the left-handers, so far. 21 pitches in this inning. The runners will be off on the pitch. Full count, two outs, bases loaded. On the ground, one hopper right to Aaron Hill. Markham gets out of it. John Markham strands the bases loaded. He's left six on base. He still leads it six to one.
to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. John Markham did a great job getting out of that bases loaded, no out situation. He allowed just one run and stranded the bases loaded. Blue Jays lead it 6 1. John McDonald. Opposite field triple his last time up, his first RBI of the season. Swing and belts it down the left field line, but that'll hook into foul ground. McDonald, a late addition to the lineup. Travis Snyder was initially in the lineup in the ninth spot, playing in right field. But during batting practice, Snyder was scratched from the lineup. Outside, two and one. Snyder apparently dealing with flu-like symptoms, didn't feel up to it, and Batista went to right. McDonald went to third. Swinging a drive down the left field line. That's going to get down and fair. All the way to the wall. McDonald around first. He's headed for second for a stand-up double. His second extra base hit of the afternoon. He went up to Cito last year and said, I wish you could have been my hitting coach early in my career. I think I would have put up better numbers. He is turning on pitches now that he didn't do early in his career. He had his best average last season since 2005 and his highest slugging percentage at 655. And he really credits what Cito Gaston told about getting ready and being able to turn on a pitch. Now Fred Lewis. Perfect hit the plate so far. A walk and a sack fly. He scored a run and driven in one. And for good measure, he stole a bag. Fouls it back. Well, I don't know that there's anybody that has a better idea about hitting than Cito Gaston as far as getting his hitters prepared and putting them in a positive frame of mind. Constantly encouraging them, just trying to simplify things. Long drive to right field, and this ball is gone! Fred Lewis with his first American League home run, a no-doubter in the second deck in right. That was a laser to right field. There is some hidden power in Fred Lewis, and the Blue Jays are trying to bring it out. I think that's just a glimpse of what you can see from this young man. Breaking ball down and in, and he just turns on it. Boy, he loves that ball down and in. We have seen him hammer some breaking balls down and in, and boy, that time he put a charge in it. 8-1 Blue Jays. There goes another one to left. Aaron Hill has gone back to back. Second home run of the season for the Blue Jays second baseman Aaron Hill. The baseball guy sitting next to me here said that Aaron Hill was going to go deep today. He just missed his first time up, and he doesn't miss this time. Fastball, and this one has hit a long way to left field. He was getting close. Yeah, he said he was getting close, and, boy, he was close twice today. And he said, I know what I'm doing. I know what I need to do to get right. And he's off to a good start here today. A double, a home run, and a walk. And Kirk Young out to try to help Ben Sheets get situated here. Nine runs on nine hits. Home run has been a big part of what the Blue Jays have done the first part of the season here. But the key today is getting that leadoff batter on. That's four straight innings that the Blue Jays have gotten the leadoff runner on. Tough to pitch out of the stretch. You constantly put yourself in tough situations. Adam Lynn. Nobody out here in the fourth. Well, we had mentioned what a tough start it had been for Ben Sheets last time out. Cut on and missed. Last time 
He went to the mound on Tuesday at Tampa Bay. Pitched four innings, gave up nine hits and eight earned runs. Gave up two home runs to the Rays in that game. Three more home runs hit by the Blue Jays. They've hit ten in this series. They've almost hit as many home runs in this series against Oakland as Oakland has hit all year. Chased a breaking ball for a strikeout. You can watch over 2,000 games live or on demand in high definition quality when you sign up at MLB.tv. Packages start at $99.99. You can check it out at BlueJays.com and sign up for MLB.tv. Vernon Wells checked his swing. Wells with his 12th double of the season back in the first inning. Lays off a breaking ball. Two balls and no strikes. Sheets was a power pitcher the eight years he spent over in the National League, over 1,200 strikeouts. In the eight years in Milwaukee, he's always had a great arm. He has just had to battle some injury problems in his career six times on the DL, shoulder problems. He had a finger problem one year last year. He had the Tommy John surgery in his elbow. Breaking ball just outside. Three and one. Well, when Sheets was in his prime making those all-star teams, his fastball was 96-97. Sharply on the ground. Vernon Wells has his second hit of the afternoon. Tenth hit for the Blue Jays. And that's going to be it for Ben Sheets. Bob Gare now the dugout. He's got Brad Kilby warming up, and he has made the call for the left-hander. Blue Jays all over the A's. It is nine to one here. Jays are up nine to one. He was just recalled from AAA Sacramento on April the 23rd. He has gotten into four of the eight games since then. There are his numbers. He has not walked anybody. Left-hander has a very deceptive type of delivery. Really hides the ball behind his back leg. Sinker slider type of pitcher. Doesn't really overpower you. First batter he'll face will be the left-handed hitting Lyle Overbay. Overbay had a single. Back up the middle, start the third inning. Kilby, he's got a hesitation delivery where he kind of extends that arm back behind him and comes at you. It can be 
tough to deal with. Might take you a pitch or two to get the timing. He's a rapper where he wraps that wrist behind him. The only guy I can remember that really had the ability to command that was Rick Sutcliffe. That's the guy I was, the exact guy I was thinking about, too, where you wrap the ball behind you. And the reason pitching coaches teach you not to do that is it really throws off your mechanics to the point that you don't get your arm up and flowing together with your lower half. The arm seems to, to drag just a little bit behind you. Everything has to be really fine in your mechanics to overcome that. There's so many moving parts that have to be in timing to really work. Outside, three and two. Blue Jays have scored nine runs on ten hits. All of that against Ben Sheets. Vernon Wells at first is Sheets' responsibility. Opposite field, ball left field line. Patterson on the run, can't make the play. It's in the foul territory and bounces into the seats. Three more home runs today for the Blue Jays' offense. Alex Gonzalez, Fred Lewis his first, and Aaron Hill his second. Good to see. Oh, boy. Good, good to see the top of the lineup. Up and down the lineup. We had the, the bottom half the other day do a lot of damage. Three, two. Overbay again down the left side. This is what we have been talking about, how he hides the ball behind his left side there. And wraps it behind his back before he shows it to the hitter. Another pop on the left side. Kuzminov into foul ground. And makes the catch. Overbay's retired. Second out of the inning. They've got a cute little name for that uh, pitch there. It's called the Inviso Ball. Because he hides it behind his back so much and wraps it. That you can't even see it as a hitter until it's too late. Well, you're always, as a batter, trying to find the release point, and Kilby might be a challenge in that area. Two outs now for Gonzalez. His eighth home run came in the first. Outside. It's a strike. Alex Gonzalez hit a high breaking ball out of the ballpark. Off of Ben Sheets, part of a four-run first inning. Chased an off-speed pitch. A ball and two strikes. Brad Kilby in it. In relief of Ben Sheets. Blue Jays up by eight. Nine to one as they hit here in the fourth. Two and two. We'll watch some of these Blue Jay batters approaches at the plate now against Kilby. Are they taking pitches? Are they seeing it? Gonzalez didn't see that, tried to check his swing. He went too far. Kilby strikes out Gonzalez. He gets his two guys to get out of the fourth, but the Blue Jays way out in front.
since then, the numbers have not bared out for him. 239 wins and 271 losses for the Oakland A's. And I think you can trace that back to the Oakland A's having to remake themselves yet again. First pitch swinging. Martin lifts it high. Bautista battling the sun, using that glove to shade his eyes, and he makes the catch one out. And point about the championship years, and you mentioned 2006. That was the fifth postseason appearance for Oakland of the decade. And after that season, they were forced, really, to trade some of their great players. Dan Heron, Joe Blanton, Rich Harden, Nick Swisher. They all had to be traded because they started making too much money for them, and they've had to, like, remake themselves. Oakland is going to be just fine. Billy Bean is one of the best general managers in all of baseball. But it just seems like in the last decade or so, they've had to reinvent themselves a couple of different times and start over. Ground ball in the hole. Long throw for Gonzalez. Gets him. Right on the money. Great job of unloading in a hurry, going away from the play and had to throw back across his body. Positioning himself nicely and then getting the backhand and the accuracy and the strength of that throw. Good job by Overbay to stretch and make that play over at first base. A couple of fine defensive plays here. And they've both happened against Ryan Sweeney. First pitch swing and cued off the end of the bat. Overbay will step on the bag. A 1 2 3 fifth inning on just four pitches. Big comfy chairs in the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone are some participants from baseball, amateur baseball. It was big amateur baseball day here today, and we thank TD Trust for accommodating our great amateur baseball friends. Jose Bautista takes a ball and then cuts on the second pitch over toward the A's dugout and back into the seats. Blue Jays jumped all over Ben Sheets here this afternoon. Nine runs on ten hits in four and a third. Another pop-up. This one back over in front of the dugout. Derek Barton, the first baseman, makes the catch. Take a look at the pitching line brought to you by MLB 10, the show only on PlayStation. Well, just three and a third innings today for Sheets, a couple of walks, a couple of strikeouts. Home runs were a big part of today. The Blue Jays unloading three of them. Blue Jays have hit 10 home runs in this series. 
One out for John Buck. That's John Buck with that three home run performance on Thursday night in the series opener. Off speed pitch. Late on a fastball, a ball and two strikes. The A's pitchers in the first five games of this road trip pitched to a 7.68 ERA. And that'll even go up from there. Had a tough road trip. Faced a couple of good offenses in this road trip down in Tampa against the Rays, and then here the Jays have been swinging the bats, I think, really well. Tampa Bay, in my mind, the most well balanced team in baseball. They can beat you so many different ways. 2 2 off the plate inside. They've got power, they've got good hitters, and they've got great overall team speed. Offensively, it's got to be a, a nightmare for a pitcher to face a team like Tampa. 3 2 to John Buck. Line drive down the left field line. That's a fair ball up against the wall. Buck around first, headed for second. And he'll coast into second with his second double of the afternoon. Get yourself ready. 3 2. Cito says, hey, have a plan. Not when you step into that batter's box, but when you're on the on deck circle, thinking about what you want to do. John Buck gets himself ready and tomahawks a ball down into the corner. Extra base hit number two. This ball is hooked and hit hard. Buck's in scoring position now with one out for John McDonald, who's had some day already. McDonald, a triple and a double. Cuts on the first pitch. John McDonald just once again brings into focus how he keeps himself so well prepared. Didn't know he was going to be in the lineup, and all he does is produce with the bat. I always found it easier to not know that I was in the lineup, and all of a sudden, hey, you're in the lineup. So you just go out there and just free yourself. See the ball, hit it. You don't, you don't have time to go out there and think about too much. Well, he certainly didn't have time to think about his approach against Ben Sheets. No. He just got in the box and reacted to what he saw. Fights it off out of play. But at the same time, you just have to have the mindset when you're an extra player like John McDonald that you might be called upon at any point in the day. Yeah. You can never assume you're not going to play. So prepare. You have to prepare. Another 0-2 pitch to John McDonald. Dunks out of the way. And I don't know if there's anybody on the Blue Jays who prepares as much as John McDonald. You see him out here every day taking ground balls at third, at second, at short. When pitchers are working on their fielding practice, he is out here commanding that infield. Down and away, two and two. Well, what he also does, too, is he kind of pushes the regulars. He sets a high standard for how you do things in the pregame drills. Everybody makes it fun. It's a game then. Try to outdo Johnny Mack. Two balls, two strikes to the number nine hitter. Popped him up right side. Sweeney calls for it. Makes the catch. Two down. Well, Fred Lewis, who is quickly making a name for himself here in Toronto, has had a perfect day at the plate. He walked and scored in the first, had a sack fly in the second, and hit his first home run in the American League in the fourth. Good cut. Now, here's another guy, Cito Gaston, is talking about trying to give him the building block of getting ready early. That's what they were talking to him in the cage the other day. Get yourself ready. 
just a quick reminder after every turn through in batting practice, make sure you get yourself ready. And if you do that, the head of the bat is going to be out in front, and you're going to hit the ball a lot harder. That time he was a little late. But when you do and you get that thing ready, good things happen. Watch where this one lands. Ooh. On a line, too. 0-2 to Fred Lewis with two outs. John Bucks at second. Just off the plate. Blue Jays were in desperate need of a leadoff hitter. They didn't have anybody that fit the profile, and boy, Fred Lewis is perfect. Fights it off to stay alive. It was early. Oh, it's early on, obviously, and I'm not going to put him in the same category, but the situation is very similar to that of when Devon White came to the Blue Jays. He was cast off by the Angels. Devon wasn't necessarily thrilled about hitting in the leadoff spot. Cito Gaston talked to him about, hey, you're only the leadoff guy once. Go up there and hit. Be aggressive. Get it ready. Debo worked out pretty good. Yeah, I think so. One and two to Fred Lewis. Sharply hit on the line, caught by Pennington. Lewis is retired for the first time today. Blue Jays, 9-1 over Oakland at the end of five. in Anaheim. Voting has begun. Vote for your favorite Blue Jays players, Vernon Wells, Aaron Hill, Adam Lind, and Alex Gonzalez. You can cast your vote at BlueJays.com. Reminder fans, you can vote as many as 25 times per email. Vote early, vote often. Blue Jays have some very legitimate candidates in Wells, Lind, Gonzalez, and Hill, and Alex Gonzalez has moved up the leaderboard in the RBI category. He has tied Paul Konerko now for third in the American League. Eric Chavez, a single in two trips. Sean Markham, staked to a 9-1 lead here as he works in the sixth. In his first five starts, Markham amassed a total of nine runs in support. It's a fly ball to center. Vernon Wells on the run. That ball is carrying up against the wall. He makes the catch. Looks like the ball... Rattled around in his glove, but he was able to hang on to it and bring it in. And you know, Sean Markham's loving every minute of that. As an outfielder, you got to get back to the wall. Chavez, with great power, sends this one right to the wall in center. He finds it, and then he clamps onto it right there. The fingers right at the edge of the glove. Hold on to that baseball. Nice play by Vernon in center. Been three good defensive plays in support of... Sean Markham here today. Bautista in the first, took a base hit away from Ryan Sweeney. Gonzalez 
in the fifth did the same also against Sweeney. And then that play by Vernon Wells in center field. The Blue Jays have supported Markham with their bats and with their gloves today. One out here in the sixth on the corner. A ball and two strikes to Adam Rosales. Rosales has worked Markham for a couple of walks today. Missed down. Two and two. Cut on and lined into center field. Sound like it may have broken his bat. Rosales is on board, continues to have a red hot road trip. He certainly has. Third time that he has been on today. Hitting over 400 on this road trip. He will battle you every single step of the way. Eric Patterson has struck out twice against Markham here this afternoon. Takes a strike. He's held to just five hits through five and a third here. On the ground, Gonzalez steps on the bag for one to first base, double play. Defense has been sharp behind Markham here today. We've seen great plays all over the field. Bautista in the first inning. Gonzalez in the fifth. Vernon Wells here in the sixth. Good glove work. A Sunday, May 16th, against the Texas Rangers, the first 10,000 fans receive a Blue Jays cap. For ticket information, call 416-341-1234. Or you can log on to BlueJays.com or check in on most Rogers Plus locations for tickets. That's May 16th, Italian Day. Aaron Hills had a big day. He's perfect on the afternoon. A double in an RBI, he walked, and he also hit his second home run of the season. And he's got another knock. Three for three for the Blue Jays second baseman. He holds his bat up high, so he really likes to come down through the ball, and he does exactly that. Right down, his head is down. Just a textbook swing. His fourth time that he's being on base. So far today, just a triple shy of the cycle now for Aaron Hill. 
Adam Lynn cuts on the first pitch, lines it right to the second baseman. Hill gets back safely at first. May have stepped on Derek Barton in the scramble to get back. Then hit it sharply, but right at Adam Rosales. Vernon Wells, double and a single. Also drove a rent, drove in a run. He is up to 18 RBI for the season. Swings at the first pitch and hits it to center field. Rajai Davis makes the catch and Wells is retired. Two down. Jay's being very aggressive. I know they have another first pitch home run. Hills was a first pitch home run. I believe that's 13 now that leads the American League in that category. Have an aggressive approach when you get up in that box and they throw you a first pitch fastball. Turn on it. Well, then that's a great approach, too. It's basically being selectively aggressive. You be aggressive, but get a good pitch to hit. Overbay takes the first pitch outside. Bobby Bonds was my hitting coach in Cleveland, and he was the same type of theory. You know, swing until your brain tells you it's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> on the ground, Rosales has it on a big hop, and Overbay is retired. Blue Jays, 12 hits today. They have been all over the athletics pitches. They lead 9 to 1. Memorial Cup continues this afternoon. It's game three of the OHL final. The Barry Colts against the Windsor Spitfires with the Spitfires leading the series two games to none. It'll be on at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific time, and our own Sam Cosentino will call the action. CHL playoff hockey. Sean Markham in control throws a first pitch strike to Josh Donaldson, the catcher. Cut on a little flare behind the mound. Aaron Hill on a big hop has plenty of time, and Donaldson's retired. Good pitch right in on the hands to Donald. Said Markham's really had just one bad inning. That was the fourth inning when he gave up the run. Let's quickly take a look at where this pitch was just pouring right in on the right handed hitter. And Aaron Hill knows that he's got time. Just field it cleanly. Take your time. He takes a quick look to see where the runner is, and he knows he can record the out easily. Number nine batter Rajai Davis drove in the only run of the game for Oakland and gets pushed back with a fastball. You mentioned the fourth inning. Markham gave up back-to-back -back singles and then walked the bases loaded. But he minimized the damage, allowing the A's just a single run. I mean, that's the true beauty of pitching. There was no panic in his approach. Nope. He had a comfortable lead, and he just methodically cut down the athletics, stranded the bases loaded. And he almost got out of it with nothing. 
without any run scoring. And, and now he finds himself about where he has been all season long. He has averaged seven innings every time he takes the mound. Working to the number nine hitter here with one out in the seventh. Very efficient. Just like all the other starts that he has had this year. One and two to Davis. Just missed outside. Markham really had a rough inning in that fourth inning. He threw a lot of pitches, but boy, he came right back in the fifth and threw just four pitches. That really helped him out to manage the overall pitch count. And He's still under 100 pitches. And another double play to end last inning. The 29th of the season by the Blue Jays. Three and two count. Rajai Davis, the center fielder. Fisted foul down the left side. Fourth. A one out walk to Rajai Davis. Fourth walk of the afternoon issued by Sean Markham. Chris Walton stirring up things down in the bullpen, get somebody loose. Been a breeze here today for Sean Markham. He got Four runs in the first, two more in the sixth, take to an early lead. You know, we'll talk about all the runs that they have scored and how Markham now has worked into the seventh inning and will probably get through the seventh inning. But when you talk to him at the end of the game, I bet you he's going to be upset about those four walks. Yeah, that's just not part of his game, nope. and he can ill afford to do that. You go yep. up against the upper echelon teams, and those four walks will come back and cost you. That's big Ronnie Lewis loosening up. But you're right. That's what he's going to focus on, mm -hmm. and he's always trying to improve, never settled, never settles for a particular outing. He just said, hey, there's work to be done. One out here, top of the seventh inning. Down the right field line, but that's going to hook foul. Cliff Pennington, 0 for 2 this afternoon. He walked in the third inning. Five hits in the series for the A's shortstop Pennington. Takes the ball down. It's a ball and two strikes. Two and two. Markham kind of came out of his delivery there, and the ball got away from up and away. Yeah, trying to end it a little bit too quickly now. I think what you want to do here. Pennington a little bit better from the left side than he is from the right side. He's got three home runs, two of them batting left hand, and he's, that's three in a row now. You can see Markham is trying to make an adjustment here, middle of the inning out there, just to get that release point back. Four walks this afternoon. Certainly not vintage Sean Markham. There goes Davis, fouled straight back. Sean Markham needed a game like this. Looking for his first win of the season. This is his sixth start of the season. He pitched in so many tight ball games and really had done exactly what you want from a starter but had nothing to show for it yet. Yeah, and every pitch and every inning so far this season has been max effort tight. Here he got runs early, and now he can, you know, mess around and 
know that he if he makes a mistake it's not going to cost him a game base hit into center field Davis off on the pitch goes to third so it's first and third now with one out here in the seventh and Cito Gaston has made the call Rami Lewis is ready so he's not going to waste any time but Sean Markham has done his job here today again pitching into the seventh inning six and a third looking at his first win of the season as he leaves the game after six and a third Markham with a comfortable lead a little bit frustrated I'm sure as he wanted to get out of that seventh inning but four walks led to his undoing that's a season high four walks he had not walked more than a batter in the game until last time out when he walked three against the Red Sox so he looked to Rami Lewis to get him out of this First and third situation here in the seventh. And here's the value of having that second left-hander down in that bullpen for the Blue Jays. You can go to a lefty before the eighth inning. That's usually Scott Downs' territory. A couple of lefties coming up and good hitters in Barton and Sweeney. So you bring in that hard-throwing Rami Lewis. Rami Lewis does what you want. First pitch strike to Derek Barton. Ball in the dirt. Runner at first holds his ground. Pennington broke and then decided he wasn't 100% certain he could make it. Rami Lewis making his third major league appearance. He pitched an inning on Friday. Hit a batter, gave up a single, but nothing more. He got Derek Barton to hit into a fielder's choice in his last outing. 1 1 to the A's first baseman. Cut on and missed. It's 9 1 Blue Jays here, top of the seventh inning. Blue Jays jumped out to a 6 0 lead after two. A ball and a strike. Breaking ball missed. Rami Lewis, the interesting story, nine years in the minors before he got his first call to the big leagues, and he called it the greatest day of his life, his mother and father. Rami Sr. here, enjoying the first week of his big league career. Probably nervous. <laughs> and watching your son play. You get nervous watching your kids Absolutely. participate. Everything. Absolutely. No matter what kind of sport it is, no matter what game it is. No matter what age it is. Yeah. Or what level. Because you can't do anything but sit there and watch. 
Rami Lewis has a tough customer here in Derek Barton. 2-2. Two -two. Missed outside, 3-2. and two. Good idea, that strike zone as Barton. You mentioned the 21 walks, which is tied for first in the American League. There is the reaction on the 2-2 two -two pitch. <clears throat> Why did you swing at that? <laughs> <laughs> three and two to Barton. On the ground. Gonzalez to Hill to Overbay. Double play. Robbie Lewis gets his man. A double play off the bat of Derek Barton. And his parents love it. Third, he gave up six hits, and Rami Lewis saved him a couple of earned runs. Right there on that double play, uh, Blue Jays have averaged about six and two-thirds innings out of their starters. Good uh, start today for Sean Markham. Steve Tolleson has come in now and taken over for Pennington, the shortstop. And Gabe Gross now over in right field for Ryan Sweeney, who's had some knee problems, and they wanted to get him off the turf. Alex Gonzalez, two-run home run in the first. Went after a fastball. A ball and two strikes. Gonzalez leads the Blue Jays in RBI with 21. He now has tied Vernon Wells with eight home runs. Pretty good production and another real positive that's come out of this game today. Fred Lewis and Aaron Hill. Production at the top of the lineup. Lewis with a home run, a walk, a sack fly. Aaron Hill, three hits. And an RBI. Gonzalez chased the ball in the dirt. And then he'll be tagged out. Commentator clothing provided in part by Z Zenya. Statistical information provided by Stats Inc. Music provided by Universal Canada. One out here, bottom of the seventh. Blue Jays are up nine to one. Jose Bautista, the only Blue Jay to not reach base. Mm -hmm. 
but he started the theme of this whole afternoon when he made a fine defensive play in the first inning. Robin Ryan Sweeney of a potential two-out extra base hit. He laid out, made a fine diving catch in right to end the first. A ball and two strikes on the Blue Jays' right fielder. All down in the dirt. Got to join the hit club here. Nothing worse than everybody going up there, seeing that pitcher. Hit a line drives all over the ballpark, and you can't come up with at least one. Bautista and Lynn looking to be guys to get on the board. Chased a high one there for a strikeout. Second strikeout of the inning. He's an aggressive swinger, and he likes that high fastball, but this one by Kilby rises up out of the strike zone. Two straight strikeouts now for the left-hander. Probably his last inning of work for Bob Garrett. John Buck. Another big day at the plate. John Buck with a pair of doubles, and he's hit them both hard. Double down the left field line in his last at bat. Average up to 232. That's the beauty of baseball, especially being a regular player. You look at Craig Breslow, the left hander, loosening up. Regular players get a chance every single day to turn things around. Yeah, and early in the season, it only takes a couple of games. I mean, good games, and all of a sudden you see that average up where it should be, 280, 290, 300. If you get off to a bad start, don't look at the scoreboard. It'll mess you up. Up and away, two and two. Well, and I think it's important to understand, you know, it's really a six-month season. You have a couple of bad weeks you can literally turn it around the way John Buck has on his homestand two and two laid off a high one Blue Jays will go on the road after this game go to Cleveland for a three game series finishing up with a Wednesday afternoon game then into Chicago for four and then wrap up the long road trip with three games against the Red Sox at Fenway Park Three and two to John Buck. Swing and hammered again. That ball is down past Eric Patterson. John Buck around first. Patterson bobbles the ball. He'll have his third double of the afternoon. Swing it. Create sound. And that's just what John Buck does here. Three, two. He sees one on the inner half and he rips it into the corner. Now, this ball was hit so hard. Well, Eric Patterson had a shot, but he's going to fumble it around a couple of times. One, two, three times. And by that time, John Buck has his third extra base hit of the afternoon. You know, this Blue Jay team really showing signs that the balance of the lineup is coming around. John McDonald's had a good day at the plate. Tripled and doubled Scored a run and drove in a run. Well, there's the schedule that you were just talking about. Get to go to Cleveland. That'll be Brett Cecil versus Mitch Talbot tomorrow. We'll also see the one and two Jake Westbrook and Fausto Carmona in that series. Fausto Carmona, the great sinker ball pitcher, will pitch on Wednesday afternoon. Two balls, no strikes on John McDonald. Popped up behind the mound. Infielders converge. The first baseman takes charge, and John McDonald's retired. Blue Jays 9 1 after seven.
as we return to take on the Texas Rangers. That series starts on May 14th, the three-game weekend series against Texas. That'll be followed by the Minnesota Twins, a quick two-game series as Minnesota comes to town. The Twins off to a 15-9 and nine start. They lead the American League Central by a half a game. Texas 12 and 12 at the beginning of play this afternoon. 416-341-1234 for tickets. Or you can log on to BlueJays.com or get tickets at most Rogers Plus locations. See the Minnesota Twins are kicking it around again, creating a lot of errors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they dropped the ball four times already this year. <laughs> wow. What a team. Next homestand, you get to see the Rangers and the Twins right here at the Rogers Center. Gabe Gross batting for the first time today came on defensively. Cuts on the first pitch. Gross got a start in yesterday's game, played in right field, was 0 for 3 with a walk. Rami Lewis out in front 0 and 2. Lewis came in with runners at the corners and one out to face Derek Barton and got him to hit into an inning ending double play. Jake Fox has come out. The on deck circle. 0 and 2 to Gabe Gross. He struck him out. Gross looking at a fastball. Rami Lewis gets the strikeout. Yeah, you keep throwing strikes, and you're going to spend a long time in the big leagues. Rami Lewis, that's all he's done in his three appearances on this homestand. He's come out of that bullpen, and he's made quality pitches. There's one to put away Gabe Gross for the first out. Jake Fox will be announced as a pinch hitter now, batting for Kevin Kuzminoff, the third baseman. Fox had started twice in his series as the DH and doesn't waste any time. Rips it into right field for a base hit. A one-out base hit for the pinch hitter, Jake Fox. That'll bring to the plate Eric Chavez. Blue Jays are up 9-1 to one here as the A's bat in the eighth. That single in the fourth started a rally that led to the only A's run of the day. We were talking earlier about Oakland and how they've had to kind of reinvent themselves over the last couple of years. When they started this season, they had the youngest roster in all of baseball, averaging about 27 years old. So good things are going to happen, I think, to this organization. Well, the real challenge has always been keeping those players in the system. You mentioned the great teams. They had Jason Giambi. They had the let go to free agency. Miguel Tejada to free agency. They lost Hudson, Mulder, and Zito, and those are all homegrown players, and it's difficult for this team to keep them in the franchise. Kurt Suzuki there on the left is the starting catcher currently on the disabled list. You know, you always have to stay ahead of the curve. And one of the things that the A's are starting to do now is they're, they have doubled their budget for signing international players. They have gotten more scouts in the Taiwan, South Korea, Australia, Europe, and China to come to try and find pop players, not just here in the States or in Latin America, but all over the world. That'll flare down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Fox goes around second into third. Lewis bobbles it, and Chavez ends up at second. A little fisted flare ball down the left field line will go as a double for Eric Chavez. One of the softer base hits that you have seen this afternoon, but it'll go as a double. Lewis throws hard, and he gets inside of Chavez and he places it perfectly down the line and with good English it slides over in the foul territory. Adam Rosales chases a high fastball.
Second and third, one out here as the A's bat in the eighth. Fisted out of play. Lewis ahead 0 and 2. Base hit into center field. Fox will come in to score. Right behind him is Chavez. The throw is cut off. Adam Rosales has a two run single to center. It's 9 3. Blue Jays. What a series for that young man right there. Adam Rosales. Two strikes. He's already seen one breaking ball from Rami Lewis, and this time it just rolls in the middle of the plate. Uh, good hitter. And a hot hitter like Rosales is, he bangs it into center field. Been on base four times here this afternoon. Eric Patterson, the left fielder. Fouls off the first pitch. Well, you mentioned the athletics and how challenged they are. There's been so much talk about building a new stadium, and there's been talk in different areas. San Jose, Fremont, downtown. Oakland, maybe on the harbor there in Oakland near Jack London Square. Fisted towards Gonzalez. No play at first base. Line drive right at the shortstop. But like so many communities, so many states, California is economically strapped. And Oakland right. is in that problem as well. So I don't know how they can build a new stadium. The Oakland Coliseum used to be a beautiful baseball stadium and then the Raiders built that Al Davis monster in center field for football and really changed the personality of the ballpark Mount Davis they refer to it <laughs> in the Bay Area <laughs> in center field there well they went out and they tried to get Chapman who eventually signed with the Reds another young player so they are making a commitment to spending some money on some international players, and I think that's one way that you stay ahead of the curve. Uh, Blue Jays certainly have been aggressive in that department, signing the young shortstop, Adini Echeverria. A ball and two strikes on Josh Donaldson. Struck him out. Rami Lewis strikes out two in the inning, but gives up a couple of runs. Aaron Hill, a triple shy of the cycle. He's had a big day at the plate, hitting his second home run of the season.
Kuzminov takes over defensively at third base. And coming in to work the bottom of the eighth inning, the left-hander, Craig Bresler. What a job by Brad Kilby. Three and two-thirds innings of shutout relief. Three strikeouts, no walks, no runs. He'll turn it over to Breslow. 11th game this year for Breslow. Fastball, curveball, a little bit of a straight changeup. He's also throw a cutter to get people off that changeup. He's a control pitcher. Four walks this year and ten strikeouts for Breslow. Fred Lewis had a good day at the plate. He walked, scored in the first, had a sack fly in the second, hit his first home run, a two-run shot in the fourth. He also lined to the shortstop. Had good at-bats here all afternoon. It's interesting. Cedar Gaston was talking specifically about Lewis and how intriguing he has been since he's joined the Jays. Popped up left side. Eric Patterson, a couple of steps in, makes the catch. Yeah, he, he too feels like there is more in there from Fred Lewis, and he plays a good outfield too. Says he covers a lot of ground. He can use him in center field now when he wants to give Vernon Wells a day off like he did yesterday. Get Wells in the D8 spot, get him off this turf for a while. Just adding to the depth of this team. Now here's Aaron Hill. This has been a Hill-like afternoon. He's homered, he's doubled, he's singled, and walked. Driven in two runs. And again, here's another perfect example. We were talking about John Buck, how quickly he's turned things around. Aaron Hill, it was just a matter of his timing come around. He started out on the disabled list. This is just his 12th start of the season in the 26th game. Right at the first baseman, Fox bottled it. Recovers in time to get Aaron Hill. Good stretch by Derek Barton on the other end over there. Fox is normally a catcher, DH type. He'll fill in at third base in games like this, so he's not real familiar with this ball. Kind of bangs off of his chest, but he picks it up quickly. It's at the other end where the play was made. Barton stretching a right-handed first baseman going into the line there to save an error. Good play. Well, I tell you what, you got to get loose in pregame when you're a first baseman, much like a hockey goalie. Make sure you stretch out those legs. Two outs now for Adam Lynn. Cued off the end of the bat. That's going to dribble into foul territory. A ball and a strike to the Blue Jays DH. 9-3. Blue Jays lead it. 1 and 2. Breslow's been tough against lefties the last couple of years. Held them to an average under 200 a couple of years ago and just over 200 last year. You can see why. He's got a nice little breaking ball and a sneaky fastball. Just off the outside corner. Josh Renicky appears to be ready to come into this game. Rami Lewis got a big double play to end the seventh. And then had a two-run eighth. First runs allowed by Rami Lewis in his young career. 
So Josh Renicky appears to be ready to work the top of the ninth. Blue Jays trying to win the series. Up two games to one with a six run lead here in the eighth. Breaking ball just off the plate again. Good eye. That is a tough pitch to take by a left handed batter. That sweeping breaking ball with two strikes. Full count. Foul back. And it's interesting when you see the ball club every single day, you can see guys go in and out of rhythm. You see John Buck right now is in a groove. Vernon Wells has been in a groove. Aaron Hill now starting to get the feeling. Hammered to right field. But Gabe Gross has got a beat on it. And Adam Lynn's retired. Good inning for Craig Breslow. Hazel bat top of the ninth. They're down by six. Josh Renicky. Play of the game presented by Burger King. In the sixth inning, leading off that inning, Eric Chavez with tremendous power sends a ball to center field. Jays have been flashing some leather all afternoon, but this one is special. Vernon Wells gets back to the wall, clutches it. It looked like it was going to pop out, but he squeezes it at the last end to record the out. Good play all day long by the defense. They were on their toes, and Vernon Wells took extra bases away from Oakland. Josh Renicky will come out of the bullpen to try to finish this up here in the ninth. Third game already for Josh Renicky. Just called up this week. Good numbers all around. An inning the other night. One pitch, one out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Steve Tollison batting for the first time this afternoon came on to play defense bottom of the seventh. Pops it up toward right. Jose Bautista is there, and there are two outs. Josh Renicky seems to harness that good fastball, that big arm. His numbers down in Las Vegas were very good. Just one walk in eight and two-thirds innings, four hits given up, and he's carried that over now here in his three appearances. Derek Barton 
Oh for four today fights off that inside fastball from Renicky. No balls in a strike. Bounced in at home. One and one. Renicky and Rami Lewis getting a chance to get their feet on the ground here. This good opportunity for them both here early in this season. One one to Bart. Change up just missed down and away. This is Renicky's third game. Same for Rami Lewis made his third appearance here this afternoon. On the ground. Big hop for Overbay who will toss it to Renicky covering and the Blue Jays have won the game. John Buck, three doubles today. Fred Lewis, his first home run. John McDonald, a big game. 9-3 Blue Jays. Stay tuned for Connected with Jamie Campbell.